quite a night for the Celtics and Chris Tapps Porzingis. Maz Murray, how you guys doing? It's good. Hey, you. good huh? So I guess he was okay, huh? It looks that way. Yeah, it looks that way. Looks that way. So do you think he was playing possum at the podium? Probably. Yeah, give him the Academy Award. And I don't know. So the thing that was interesting to me, too, the first rebound he got, do you see how he got it and he, like, hunched over? And then I thought he looked a little gimpy. As I said, to, it was one of our clients, uh, Dale from Northeast Men's Health. I go, did you see that? And he's like, yeah, he don't look right. I didn't think he looked right. And then he went off. He, he went absolutely <laughs> bananas. It's crazy. Uh, I, I listened to the post game. I, I still, you know, either he's a hell of an actor or that's just how he was playing it. Because he, he was asked about his... Again, his media appearances during the week where he, you know, felt to me shaky and unconfident and uncertain of his of himself. That's how it, he portrayed himself at the podium. So they asked him about that after the fact, and uh, here's what he had to say. Jimmy, go ahead. Chris, the other day you, when you were asked, like, are you 100%, you kind of had this, like, long pause before you answered, and it got a lot of people nervous, wondering, what did that mean? Like, where were you at? Were you just messing with us? Like, what, what was kind of the process, like, getting yeah. through that to this uh, time now? Yeah, no, it's hard to say because, you know, like – all these thoughts like went through my mind in that moment like what do I answer I don't want to like I want to say I'm fine you know but obviously I haven't played I haven't I haven't been out there I haven't had the the feel of like am I 100 percent you know so um but tonight was a uh, was a uh, like uh, a firm affirmation to myself know that I'm pretty good you know I'm, I'm maybe I'm not perfect but I'm pretty good and I can play like this and and I can I can definitely add uh to this team so I like I still can't tell but what's it if he was uh, tremendous last night, and certainly, uh, if not the story of the game, one of the stories of the game. That's my opening take. Who wants to go next? Murray, go. Uh, I'll go next, because uh, I told you that the whole I'm a change man and Phoenix rising, <laughs> that whole act by Kyrie Irving was just that, an act, a complete and utter crock. And uh, credit to you people who were in the building, like Jay Stu, for helping expose it last night, because uh, you unquestionably got to him. And shout out to the uh, great Mike Gorman who confirmed on Toucher and Hardy this morning, something my wife noticed last night and that I was completely oblivious to, and that's that Kyrie was getting into it with a fan and was obviously distracted. I missed it. She was saying to me, she's like, are you seeing this? I'm like, uh-huh. I she must have been watching him closer than I was. Mike Gorman, you know, I guess, was sitting like nine rows back. He saw it. I didn't see it. But what I didn't miss is he was shook the whole night. Kyrie Irving was, was terrible. Uh, awful turnovers. He dribbled the ball off his foot at one point. The guy with arguably the best handle in the NBA, I don't think I've ever seen him do that once, ever. Like, he he looked a complete mess. He was, like, falling ass over tea kettle at one point. He was got his shot blocked a few times. He had open looks at three that couldn't have been more open. There's no one within, like, 20 feet of him, and he's clanging them off. He's 0 for, 0 for 5 from three, uh, 12 points, 6 and 19 from the floor. It's only one game, but with that performance, he can't be this inefficient for Dallas if they're going to be even in this series. I like the Celtics anyway. I picked the Celtics. But if Kyrie's going to play like that, not only are the Celtics going to win, they're going to sweep this thing. It'll be over in four games. Anthony. So we have been watching Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown play alongside one another now for seven years. Seven years. And we've asked over and over again, or at least at the beginning, who was better? Could Brown be better? Was Tatum better? Tatum's more polished. Brown's a bigger, bigger competitor. Tatum handles double teams better. And here's what I will tell you. To me, last night, this is the second time they've been in the finals. We've had this discussion a great deal about performing under pressure, the big moments, and what it's like. Second trip to the finals. They've had their mulligan. They both had failures along the way. I think we can say definitively, based on game one, or at least I feel like I can, that when the Celtics get hit in the face and they have to answer back, Jalen Brown's the guy to do it. It's not Tatum, it's Brown. So the more competitive guy, the quote-unquote foxhole guy, if that's what you want to call them, is Jalen Brown. End of discussion, that's the way it is. They can coexist in my mind. They each have strengths and weaknesses. But when the poop hits the fan and you have to have an answer, Jalen Brown is the guy, not Jason Tatum. I, I was going to say, if Porzingis was the story of the game, who was the player of the game? So I would say Brown. Uh, but I believe it or not, I would give a close second to Drew Holiday. Do we have the game sheet here? Uh, I don't have the final okay. box in front of me. And I would have said Derek White, but you know, you could have picked any of those other secondary type players. 
Keep I going, Maz. You yeah, I, no, I thought Brown and Holiday were the two best players on the team last night. And, I, you know, and I, I'm sort of leaving out Porzingis as a separate story, but I thought the, the key moment of the game, and I know we're going to get into more particulars on this later, but the key stretch of the game came at the end of the third quarter. It was about 3.55 to go, and the Celtics put together a run that opened the game back up after Dallas had cut it down to eight points. That was it, and Jalen Brown was center to all of it. Now, Tatum made some plays in there, too. I don't want to take that away from Tatum because he made some contributions in that stretch. Brown was a constant through the whole thing. He was a constant through the whole thing. He's the guy when the crap hits the fan that will answer. He's the guy. I thought Brown was the player of the game. Uh, Porzing is certainly the, the, the story of the game, except Brown's, uh, Brown was more consistent over the 48 minutes. He played seven more minutes and was more impactful in that stretch. In the second half, Porzingis was one for four, and uh, Dallas, uh, surprisingly to me, made an adjustment on him and actually did a decent job on him in the second half. So like when it was winning time and the, the game was in the balance there, if it, if, you know, if it ever was that stretch you're talking about, the end of the third, uh, that's when Jalen Brown was at his best. So I, I, I thought he was the player of the game. I, I, do, do you have a problem with Tate, Tatum's game before I go to the phone? Uh, one thing in particular drove me absolutely freaking bananas. Six turnovers. Six. This is what happened in the finals two years ago. So he's got to stop that. That that can't keep going on. Now, overall, beyond that, I will say, I actually thought for the most part he was okay other than that. But that's a big thing. Six turnovers. He had three in the first quarter. They were up 17, so nobody noticed. But he was turning the ball over early. I thought uh, shooting-wise early, he looked pretty good. He didn't score a point until they were up 10. Uh, and he was passing the ball well. I, I thought, for the most part, he looked pretty good me early. Too. I liked his game. The turnovers, though, drive me bananas. I'm sorry. Six turnovers, and a couple of them were really ugly. Really ugly. Right, there's some opening takes for you. We do that uh, as you populate the call screen, which you have. You can join us throughout the day at 617-779-0985. We go to the calls first segment here on uh, Fridays, if you're ready, and you are. Jeff in Watertown. Go ahead, Jeff. Michael, you had a great line once. You said, you always tell the truth, and sometimes the truth changes. Well, look, I've been critical of Missoula in the past, but today my Missoula Oblongata is buzzing. Going back to the final minutes of the Pacers series when he subbed Tatum offense defense, Porzingis off the bench last night, his third quarter timeouts. He's just been pushing the right buttons lately, putting the time, the team in a position to succeed. Got to give him credit. Thanks. See ya. Okay. Overrated. People are go going way too far with... Missoula, uh, the the one thing for sure they're going way too far is oh my god! You see that timeout he called at the end of the third? It was easy. Credit to that timeout. Wow, that timeout. Woo, that timeout. Yeah, good for you. You're paying attention, coach. Like this is <laughs> hockey, and you only get one of them, and yeah. it's like you know those. It's like, you have how many? Seven. What, what whatever the number is, you <laughs> your your lead was at one point twenty nine, and it was down to eight. The coach called a timeout after a Doncic three. Who doesn't call the timeout there in the sport of basketball? Yeah, it was pretty obvious. My God. But now he had his finger on the pulse because he called that timeout. You people, come on now. There are some really special things about that game, and there's special things about your team. Maybe because the bar, which, I, which I'm happy to engage on, but maybe the bar has been so low for him because in the past he would just let that go because that Doncic three made it what seventy two sixty four eight right? yeah so there was twenty nine down to eight who doesn't call a timeout in the sport of basketball there well maybe Missoula early on so that's why Celtics fans are like oh my god wow he's paying attention he actually is calling timeouts at the correct time now good good, good lord please Tony in Manchester yes Tony hey guys so. I'll be the first to say that I don't have the most sophisticated eye when it comes to pro bouncy balls, but um, if that's how it's going to be, if any sort of tone was set last night, I've been listening for the last few weeks this big line about does JT have it? Does he have is does he have that Kobe mindset? Um, they don't need it. I know that might not be the way this league usually is. Uh, but this team, if the unicorn's going to be dropping thirty footers and they're going to play this way, uh, it, it's not going to matter this year. Okay, I agree. And I felt that way the whole time. They don't need him to be the best player. They don't need him to be the alpha figure, which is good because he's probably not. But they don't need it. Uh, not with this team. Not this year. They don't need it. Maybe there'll be other years 
where they're not, you know, head and shoulders better than everybody else or as deep and it will come down to one guy or, you know, but I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's this team. So no, they don't need him to be. I mean, based on, again, last night, they certainly don't. And I thought he was good. Like, I liked his game. He let the game come to him. He didn't try and take over. He didn't try and do too much, which I think is when they get into trouble. See, and, I, I, I kind of thought he sucked. <laughs> really? A yeah. lot of people thought he sucked. I'll yeah. tell you, the, the thing that I didn't think he sucked. I don't think he sucked either. So, and I, in fact, I thought, like, th- there were little things he did in the game. That he rebounded well. Excellent. He, defensive rebounding was excellent. And he found open guys. That was good, too. Now, again, it wasn't, I wouldn't put it at otherworldly, but he made the right decisions. But the turnovers, I'm sorry, I can't. Six is too many. Six turnovers. At one point, I think they had, like, you know, eight. And and by the way, the six could have been more. There were, they had two more that were called team turnovers that should have been attributed to him. So it could have been eight. He was, you know, again, too loose with the ball. That's all. That's my one big gripe. The rest of it was fine. Good. Not great, but good. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Maz here. For more Celtics analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.